the important thing now, and what we started looking at last week, was the theology of Babylon. Because what I was saying is, these are four kingdoms, but it's a morphing, okay? Because it's all one statue. Yes. It's not like there were four different statues that rep exactly. represented four different kingdoms at four different times. It's only one statue, and that's very, very important. So the theology of Babylon, because in Revelations it talks about mystery Babylon, the mystery of Babylon, the mother of the harlots, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that the base theology that is so anti-God's <coughs> word was this. Number one was a salvation by works. The centrality of, a, of the building itself, right? Mm -hmm. The authority of the doorkeepers. I think I said work, uh, workers last week. That's a little confusing because I'm not talking about the laborers or the builders. Yeah, I'm talking about the the, the quote unquote leadership, right? right? And once the building is built, the doorkeepers. And the last thing was mis misdirected worship. Okay, so we were talking about the centrality of the building. In other words, the importance of the building in this in this mm -hmm. religious theology. And we talked about, as we were in last week, we were talking about how access to heaven was intended to go through the building. Yeah. In, in the theology of Babylon, once they reached, they built this tower into heaven, the only way you could get to heaven was through the building, right? Mm -hmm. So the building becomes the center of the religion. Mm -hmm. Its importance is based on the proclamation that it is the house of the Lord. Yeah. That's in, in modern times. It's That's always... Right. A religious building is always the house of the Lord. Right. Whether it's a, a, a temple to idol, idols, which was common, you can see that as it goes along in the Persian Empire, particularly in the Grecian Empire, where the Apostle Paul, when he reached Athens, was he says his spirit was provoked by all of the idolatry that he saw around him, all these temples to, to idol, idols, false gods. And then the same thing carried over into the Roman Empire, right? Right. The house of the Lord, the place where God lives. Well, this is one of the things, if you can't see this, how it's carried into modern Christianity, you haven't ever walked into a building and had somebody say to you, welcome to the house of the Lord. Which, All the time. Which is a grave, grave error. And that's the nicest thing that I can say about it. Okay? Okay. We talked about the fact God says three times in Scripture, He will not live in a house built by the hands of man, right? You know, just talking about the, a church building being the house of the Lord. I, I was talking to Alice earlier. Many years ago, back in the 70s, um, Alice and I were over at my aunt's house just for a, a Sunday dinner, I think. Uh, and my, one of my cousins was there, a, a woman who, a young woman at the time, who was like a sister to me, very much like a sister to me. Your cousin. Yeah, my cousin. And she was. She had a little boy. His name was Robbie. And Robbie at the time was about five years old. And she was telling us, because we were talking, whenever Alice and I were there, we were talking about spiritual things, right? So she was telling us how she used to drive Robbie to his daycare or kindergarten or school, whatever it was, every single morning. And every morning they would pass this Catholic church on the way. So one day, Robbie said to his mother, did you know that God drives a Volvo? Mm -hmm. And she looked at him like, okay, what? <laughs> and he said, yes, because every day when they would drive by this church, he saw the same Volvo parked outside. In the front of it. In the front of it. Well, now, you know, if you pass somebody's house every day and they have a car there, you assume that car belongs to them. Well, since this is the quote-unquote house of the Lord, he put, five years old, he put two and two together and figured out that's God's house and that car is always parked down front. That's God's car. God drives a Volvo. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous? Want to know something? We have that same childish error in the yes. church today. Yes. How clear can it be? In Acts 17, 14, as I said, one of the three places. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. This perversion is so evil because it denies the incredible truth that we are the house of the Lord and absolutely creates an atmosphere where a believer acts differently inside that quote-unquote church building than he does outside that building. Because it becomes that special place. You are the special place. I am the special place. 
We are the place where God has chosen to dwell. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. I tell you that God cannot lie. He promised to 